about plan B to F and again kind of updates um, and clarification on existing delegations and likewise paragraphs 13A to J. With regard to paragraph 14, there was a conversation uh, with the working group members around the scope of decisions and the nature of those um, delegated decisions that were taken. The members specifically saw clarification as to how they became aware of such delegations in order for them to decide whether or not any further examination of those decisions was required. Um, I have looked into that, and I've seen a plan online and spoke to other colleagues as well around the nature of the delegations that we would be focused on here. Um, and particularly I spoke to David Gould around uh, planning delegations. Uh, I think most members are familiar with planning and the hypothesis side delegations and the scope uh, and the way in which those are dealt with. And because these are council side delegations, same as executive side delegations that officers may execute. So members will be familiar with the arrangements that are in hand in relation to officer delegations for planning, uh, likewise for licensing, whether it be liquor licensing or it be taxi licensing. So there was a further conversation I think is necessary for me to have with members of the working group and I propose to have that conversation in more detail at the working group next week in October. So that I can expect to members more about the actual decisions that we're talking about here and what arrangements are already in place um, to one provide further insurance agreements and also um, discuss with members is there anything else that's still required by members with regards to delegations that are exercised by officers under this scheme as opposed to any delegations that are exercised in respect of executive decisions and so forth. So that was the reason for why um, we have no change to that substantive paragraph. Of paragraphs 15 to 16, um, that's intended to be an eight-minute moment with regards to the scope and meaning of the three key statutory roles that are often referred to in the local government in terms of the health and service, chief finance officer, and section 151 officer, and the monitoring officer. And paragraphs 8, 17 to 18 provides a clarification with regards to existing delegations um, with regards to proper officers and the post title updates pursuant to the new operation model. That then on the page 40 takes us to Schedule 4 Part 2. Um, and again, paragraph 1 to 2, the changes we propose are clarification of existing delegations with post titles being completed. Uh, and likewise, in respect of paragraph 2 and 1, uh, although there's a legislation update uh, exercise that's been undertaken in respect of that paragraph, with regards to paragraphs 2 to so paragraph 2 to 19, and the changes we propose are in respect of clarification. Existing, existing delegations and post titles being updated. So those are the nature of the changes being proposed to the scheme of delegation with regards to non-executive delegations, which this committee has been asked to consider with onward recommendation to Council for Approval. Thank you. Right, I don't know who put the hand up.
approaching bridge is because the level of uh, information being sold by the is and um, the main presented. One of the issues for me is just being clear about the different functions. And if we look at each function, like if I take a plan function or the licensing function, because these are council side, not the executive side. So this scheme of delegation is purely around the scheme of delegation of non-executive functions to officers, yeah, which is not the executive. Uh, and so that, that pre predominantly will deal with things like licensing and planning in the two key areas, if you're honest. And if you look at um, the arrangements that we already have with regards to how planning matters are dealt with, it's important, I guess, for us to explore and discuss the arrangements because then you can see and examine whether there's any further gap with regards to planning matters. Is there any, and likewise, in respect of licensing, because it's those functions that fall under this scheme as opposed to the executive side, which I appreciate the point around. to do is confuse both kinds of functions because we have already different arrangements in place for council side functions as opposed to the executive. I think my only concern very quickly to you, Chair, was that this is a standards committee. We should be looking at standards of every aspect of our activity, not just planning or licensing or whatever. And, and, and I must say, we've had histories in the past of people passing through those which shouldn't be passed through, people taking decisions which shouldn't have been made.
take the point, however, that with regards to executive side decision, that's a different situation and a different set of circumstances. But this scheme deals with council side functions as opposed to the executive side functions. And I don't want that being confused, but at the same time, I think it's important that we do look at current arrangements uh, and afford you the opportunity to express your thoughts as to whether you can take plan. Are you content with the plan delegations and the way in which offices exercise those delegations? So the existing scheme is, is already 
that speed. Well, I think we could be Excuse me, I do have somebody else wanting to come in. Sorry, Chair.
that's as I said, the changes that have been made to this document are not adding to existing delegations that councils already endorse. Uh, but what it does do is provide helpful clarity with regards to the delegations. Now, if, for example, you choose not to refer this to council for approval, well, the existing scheme enables the chief executive to make the necessary allocations of duties anyway. What you miss is the clarity for everyone to see who's doing what, which is, which is quite important when you're looking at rolling out a new operating model as of the 1st of November. So, whilst it's, you know, there, there, we can still proceed irrespective of whether this gets approved, it does beg the question why would you not approve it to ensure that the new operating model and the way in which the organisation is looking to gear up and change the way it's operating, why would you not make the cosmetic changes that this document is seeking to make? Being that change, which is a fundamental change to the way the organisation is operating, um, in line with the 1st of, of November start date. So, and I take, take all the points that members have raised with regards to the clarity, I think Councilor Monomier rightly makes reference to well, if queries are around finance and issues around finance, well, as you rightly say, there are different vehicles and different mechanisms that already exist with regards to how the Council's finances are scrutinised. Where the accountability and responsibility sits with regards to that. And we need to have that conversation to be clear that we're not creating another uh, arrangement which is actually within the gift of, for example, the Auditor and Risk Management Committee. So we do need to have that detailed conversation, very much led by which areas members are concerned that they feel either not sufficient, insufficient information is made available or the arrangements are not sufficiently clear. Uh, and then we also need to be absolutely clear as to what falls within the jurisdiction of this particular committee and what actually falls within the jurisdiction of another committee. But that doesn't stop you from asking for further clarity to be sought um, through other arrangements. But we need to discuss what the next steps are once we've had a conversation about which particular areas members are particularly concerned about. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Chair. I think thanks to Mr. Sent around a few chiefs' officers for a full request for violence or whatever, and it comes 
back to saying that's all right by me. And I think what's troubling members is getting a handle on what how the new system works together, how the officers and how the members are operating all the delegation that we've now given. And we're actually looking at this perhaps six months after we should have looked at it to get make sure we are happy in the first place. Mr. Chuan it says me and the members are happy days. I'm just going to take holes in that. Well, yeah, this is not potentially yes, but in, I think it was 2011, um, Council was required to consider each government's arrangements uh, and decide what government's arrangements it wanted to have as prescribed. And it chose to go to the strong leader cabinet model. The strong leader cabinet model changed the executive, the way in which the executive decisions are taken. So that the strong leader, uh, all the executive decisions vest in the strong leader. Uh, and so, and, and you, you're right, I said, look, prior to that, the council did set out the cabinet uh, member delegations. They went to the actual council and then it was part of the constitution. So Whereas, once we had changed to the strong leader model, um, the executive decision making and the executive powers all vest within the leader. The leader can appoint up to nine cabinet. So the, the leader, hence the name, the strong leader, um, is right. So that the leader controls and deals with the executive functions. The council doesn't have the powers and jurisdiction over the executive and the way in which decisions. And that includes the delegation to officers in respect of executive decisions and delegated powers. And hence the reason why I'm emphasizing that this scheme is about the non-executive delegations, which are council side. And, and understanding which function it is that you wish to discuss, I think, is fundamental for the conversation that we want to have in terms of which decisions and which delegated decisions are you, do you have in mind, um, because that will determine how and what mechanisms are available with regards to accountability. Because this scheme does not encompass and does not extend to executive decision making, because it's concerned with. That's the reason why I'm mentioning licensing, planning, etc. Because those are all council side functions. And we have, as I say, quite robust arrangements already with regards to how officers delegate uh, and discharge their responsibilities around any delegated decisions for planning and licensing. And, and while you're familiar with those arrangements, because those are tried and tested. So it's important that we are very clear about the functions that you have in mind and, and the clarity that you're seeking. Because we may be talking cross purposes in terms of you having views that you may have jurisdiction over a matter which doesn't actually fall within your jurisdiction because it's actually the executive side function. And I need to understand that because we can then talk about what arrangements exist, how, what, what current government arrangements exist with the government, etc. And look at how we can uh, address any particular issues that you have, should there be on the council, uh, executive side of decision making. Um, looking at, I can report those back and we can look at how they can be addressed because that's a legitimate conversation that can be had with the executive around your thoughts and views around the decision. Just to address Phil's comment about the other band and the other people who also do, Judith uh, was telling me from the government that I'm having struggling to go and make that. Never mind, I'll let the bill up down the boots. Well, there is still a leather band in the boot in Cairo.